I'm Chosen Architect, and this is FTB Genesis. Now, if you're a supporter of any tier, be sure to get your world download. That includes over on Twitch, Patreon, here on YouTube, or even on Discord. So be sure to check that out, and it'll be linked down in the description below. Now, starting off today, it's a big day, because today we should be able to start resource production passively. That's gonna be really nice. Now, at the moment, I am building up a few resources because, well, I'm going to need a bit of a few things in Ethereum, and we're also gonna need a bit of iron and a bit of copper and gold. All of these things should be really nice. Now, uh, something else I really wanna do, speaking of gold, is I wanna take some of this gold and trade with some of the piglins and do a little bit more bartering. Um, and I think it's gonna be a good thing because apparently we can get ender pearls that way. And I would love to, at this point, make a magnet. You know, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> Why? Why must these things be so scary? I'm looking right now for some piglins to trade. They can be kind of hard to spot. Using the minimap is really, really nice. But yeah, because everything is in a hazmat suit, it is really hard to tell what is what. Aha, uh -huh. I'm pretty sure this fella right here is who I need to talk to. Oh, 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 let's drop that. Go, go ahead, take it. It's yours. <gasps> oh, did not mean to do that. Sorry, you're stuck there though. Here, take this. Be happy. <laughs> oh no, did I ruin it? Maybe it will forgive me after it picks up the gold. Nope, it will not. Oh, it actually does. It's still mad at me, but uh, at least I can continue trading with it. I'll just toss down a bit of gold and just let it do its thing. <laughs> oh my gosh, it can give you ancient debris? Oh, that's right. Oh, that is so nice. Okay, so yeah, just stand here and toss a bunch of gold down and just wait for it to trade you. Yep, that is going to have to be how it works. So this has to be such a low pull on this loot pull from these guys because it took quite a while to get to this point. Oh man, and these guys are not friendly at all. But I did get two ender pearls. I will take that. Holy smokes, that was a lot. Okay. And yeah, all of this other stuff is things that I got traded along the journey here. And whew. So I think eventually having some sort of trading network would be nice. But now that I got two ender pearls, I know at least this is a semi-renewable way of getting ender pearls. It's just going to take some time and maybe setting up some auto trading stalls is gonna be the best way to do that. But speaking of renewable resources, that's where today's really going to kick off. Uh, so I wanna make this magnet and this is going to allow me to farm my resources AKA Inferium, oh, quite a bit easier. This is gonna be so nice. It allows me to, to craft up a magnet. And now that I know that Ender Pearls are super renewable in that way, uh, it's, it's gonna be handy. We also get a Godforge Pearl, which is amazing, and some extra gem dust. And we get two more Ender Pearls from our quest. Ooh, that is nice. Now, the quest does mention that uh, it, it's from talking to the natives. So, uh, and we also got Wither Skeleton Skulls. So we get skull fragments this way as well. So technically we also achieved this and we end up getting given life mending and scavenger looting to smite on this Alex's mob. What? Skeleton, uh, Skellington's revenge. Is this a sword? Wonder how much durability this has and it has smite unbreaking. Wow. This thing is kind of nice. I don't know how well this is going to help us, uh, but we might be able to get gems because it has scavenger on it. Now, I am so happy because of all of this, I was able to make a magnet uh, with those ender pearls. And in our quest, it does tell you that it, it, the ender pearls you can get from talking to the natives and figuring out all about them. We also were able to make wither skeleton skulls from the fragments that you, that you get from them. Um, but now we have renewable ender pearls. That is pretty cool. Now we get a little bit of apotheosis dust and stuff like that as well. Uh, but the main thing I want is this magnet that I can now equip in my charm slot and I can toggle it on and off with the hotkeys. So magnet. And if I go to actually, it's probably called simple magnets, toggle magnet. I like to set it to my plus key and now I can toggle it on and off as needed, which is very, very nice. So since this episode is all about resource gen, this is going to be pretty handy, right? Because now I can vein mine and all of the items should come to me. Now, remember the agricultural wing at the very beginning? I know we haven't been over there in a little while, 
But this place is quite awesome. Uh, so I kind of left it here and we haven't really touched it since. It's kind of funny this one's actually turned the other way around. Um, why is this one turned the other way around? <laughs> it's kind of funny now that I see that. Uh, but this is the agricultural wing and this is the immersive engineering garden cloche. And this is how we're going to synthesize and generate new materials from basically seeds. And this is going to be expanded upon. Now, these are actually quite easy to make if you've been producing steel up to this point. And I have. So I should be able to easily put together more of these cloches. And all they need is a little bit of water and a little bit of power. And I did a little bit of testing, a little bit of testing in a test world. And it turns out I can power multiple rows of these things with just three generators running on oil. It's going to be super easy to do. Now, the reason I went farming for those resources is because we are going to need quite a bit of resources for the powering system, basically for all of the wiring, and we're also gonna need it for the way we're gonna transport items from one location to another outside of the cloches. And we're also going to need infinite water. Now to craft up these garden cloches, we don't need much. We basically need these iron mechanical components, which are very simple to craft. And by the way, you can auto craft with this engineer's hammer. And uh, it's not too bad to do, it has quite a bit of durability, and it is very simple to set up. So, uh, Applied Energistics is really great about this. So, to craft and auto craft this iron hammer, we need to make sure we have a recipe to recreate hammers, and it has a, a hundred uses. And what we need to do is whenever we activate this, we need to make sure we have substitutions enabled. And when we do this, this is going to allow this to craft iron plates. And I've already set it up for copper plates, but it should work in this way. And it's basically the same as the metal press, except the metal press just uses power and doesn't need to take anything else. Like it's not gonna cost any more resources. But for right now, until we get the metal press set up later on down the road, I'm gonna go with this method. Now these incandescent bulbs, they're kind of interesting. They're, they require an engineer's work table. And so this is actually not too difficult at all for us to make as well. Um, because we're just going to need an engineer's blueprint. We have all of those resources and we should also have plenty of treated wood allowing us to easily make all of these materials. So we're just going to need some different variants of the treated wood. And if you've made steel up to this point, you should have all these ingredients. So now that we have our engineer's workbench, we're just going to need glass, I believe, paper, which that should be easy enough for us to craft with all of the sugar cane that we have, paper, and then I also believe, let's see, we're also gonna need something else. Ah, copper. So yeah, that's pretty straightforward. All of these things we just craft together and then it's going to allow us to make more of the things that we're working towards. So let's go ahead and just put all of the ingredients in and it automatically goes, okay, yeah, you can pull out incandescent bulbs and we can just keep making more and more of these garden cloches. So I have just about everything ready to go. Let's first go ahead and get our water production started. And I've kind of lined out sort of a template for how I want to scale this up. So right away, we should be able to use the same setup that was basically here before by placing down some fluid transporters. And uh, I don't know if we could get away with just one, probably, but I'm gonna go ahead and place two down. Eventually these pipes will be essentially connected together. So let's just start to build the water up. And that's exactly what we need to, in order for these to run. It needs water and power. And that's essentially it. Now, as far as the power goes, I think over here, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna simply place down a combustion generator. I'm gonna put some fluid in there, some oil, and same on this side. Um, and I'm gonna put some oil in. For the amount that we have, this isn't going to be too bad as far as power goes. And I'm gonna go ahead and just use the regular insulated wires as my power cables, because this works just fine. And I think it's a little bit easier than managing the ones from industrial foregoing, uh, or, or sorry, immersive engineering. Those are, uh, yeah, this this just seems a little bit more uh, easy to manage. It's, it's You don't have to go crazy with the wiring and everything. So once I have this in, these should be ready to put seeds in and ready to operate. But I am missing a few. Um, so what I want to do is simply place in the ones that uh, are missing. So we have just a string of these. We have a nice line and row. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And so I made just enough to cover this. But my goal is to have these back to back. 
So I want them like this and like this, and then like this and like this. And then I'm gonna run water piping down the back row of all of these. So essentially we will have a massive area for producing resources. We're just gonna need enough seats. So let's continue to place these down and I'm gonna talk about the ports. Now the ports are kind of important. So on the back here, this right here is our fluid port. Um, and also this side can be a fluid port. These little knobs here are power. So you could power it from the side, but the tops are also for power. And these orange slots right here, these are where things are going to output. And it will automatically output into an inventory that's in front of it, which we're gonna utilize later. And then this little spot right here on the front, this is for redstone. Um, so yes, you have fluid on the back, you have redstone on the front, and then this part is your output and then power on the sides and top. So it's a pretty simple machine, uh, all in all. Um, so you, you can also put fertilizer in here and stuff like that. But as you see, we have power, we have water, and you could put bone meal in here for fertilizer. And then you have an input slot for your dirt and a slot for your seeds, which we're going to get into the seeds in a moment. Um, so I also made some pipes. These pipes are very cheap and they're from the same mod. Um, and I want to have these routed underneath, just like so. That way I can bring the water to the other side. Also, you can you can send water, I do believe, to the bottom of the garden cloches. So you don't have to send them to the back if you don't want to. I think this is going to look pretty nice though, having it set up like so. Honestly, I love immersive engineering. You know, it's it's just a classic and it's so nice. I love the pipes and I love mod packs that actually incorporate uses for this mod because it is very fun. Uh, the only problem I would say is the multi blocks can become quite tedious to set up, uh, but they've gotten good over the years at making that a little bit easier with the projectors and stuff that allow you to sort of visualize in world what it's going to look like. So here we go. Now we get on to how we're going to transport items. And this is actually quite simple. All we need to do is place a conveyor belt right here. I'm going to place down a conveyor and notice it's going the wrong way. So I'm going to rotate it until it's facing the right way using the hammer. And then once it's facing the right way, I can simply click and we're going to notice that this is spinning in the appropriate direction. And there we go. We have belts <laughs> before create had belts. We had immersive engineering conveyor belts. And yes, the items will end up being automatically sent onto that belt and will go wherever we have this belt running. And the cool part about belts is belts can automatically push into inventories. And there's also a lot, and I mean a lot of filtering options for this. Um, this thing is pretty cool. Belts can be very powerful. Um, if you uh, use the uh, proper appropriate things that go along with belts, for example, if you use an extraction conveyor belt, it can actually pull from any side of a machine so long as you're filtering it with item logistics. It's, uh, it's, it's, it can be very powerful and I've used it to automate potions and, uh, yes, it is definitely worth doing. Now with just this alone set up, this is infinitely ex expandable. We could copy this whole thing with building gadgets and paste this anywhere we want now that we have basically a template laid out. So at this point, let's go ahead and get some seeds and get that routed into some sort of storage. When I say seeds. Today, we're also dabbling into some more mystical agriculture. And there's not many seeds that we can even make, but the ones that we can, I definitely want to get some going. So now out of all of the seeds I'm going to need to craft, I'm going to need a lot of essence. And unfortunately, we don't have the ability to make a seed. The only way that you can actually farm this essence is either by farming it physically in the nether via the ore, which is what I've been doing, or you end up getting into bees later on and you can start producing inferium from bees. But as of right now, we just need to take the inferium that I have farmed so far and well, work with that. And we don't have a whole lot, uh, but now that I have a magnet, I can farm more of this as needed. So how are we gonna upgrade this? Um, and I, I actually haven't looked too far into this and I don't know if we have tiered. It does look like we do have tiered crystals so we are going to have to use that tiered system in order to upgrade this to, from the uh, Inferium to Prudentium. Now, by default, some of these just use tier one seeds and we gotta keep that in mind. And we also, when we go to put these inside uh, and, and to farm them, when we put them inside of the garden cloche, we have to make sure that we're using the tier 
farmland that it is actually made for or higher. So we are also going to need essence, at least one of the essences to make that farmland. And that's done by taking the essence with dirt and a hoe. Now, as far as tier goes, I think about as far as I'm going to be going into these seeds is going to be uh, just going the, the tier three route. Um, so that's about as high as we're probably going to go uh, because I want to be able to at least make some gold seeds potentially. Uh, that's going to take us into Imperium. We might be able to get gold. Gold would be amazing if we can get this, get this going. But definitely iron production would be nice. Um, and there's a few other resources like coal that I would love to have automated. Now, crafting up these seeds, eh, they're just going to take a teensy little bit of time. Um, I am going to need regular seeds. And it's going to be a lot of just sitting here crafting them up one at a time for the most part. Um, so, for example, I have them lined up in my inventory. So I'll do one prosperity seed. I'm going to do the four air shards and then hit it with the four inferium. And then I'll just simply toss in my one seed. And now we've unlocked the air seeds. And the same thing is going to go for most of them, except for the nature seed. This one's a little bit different. Um, it does require all the materials that we've gotten thus far, but it requires this fragile cloud, which is interesting. It has an interesting recipe. It looks difficult, but in reality, it's not that bad. I'm getting close to having most of the seeds done. I am at this point now where I am now crafting up the higher tier stuff. So I now have all of the ingredients for this. There's an iron seed. And yes, I'll be able to make the copper. And I'm going with this. Uh, there are a few more, but I'm thinking these are going to be some of the most important um, to craft. And so we'll put that in. Now we have a copper seed. And I also skipped out on the pig seed because there's really no need, I don't think, for the pig seed itself. There's obsidian. That seems pretty important. And then gold ultimately is going to be one of the most important, especially for trading, um, as I just found out from the beginning. So we'll get this in. Oh, and I put the wrong thing in, so let's pull that one item out. And there we go, gold seed. Um, now, I'm definitely gonna be making, I think, more um, more coal seeds. Coal seeds are gonna be very important to have probably more than one of. Uh, but here we go. So I, I pretty much have everything we need. If I move all of these up, I can then uh, sort of see the assignment for the, the actual uh, dirt that we're gonna need. So yes, we are going to need farmland corresponding to each one of these tiers as well. Now, before we put all of the seeds in, let's go ahead and get a centralized area where all of this can flow into. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set up these belts as such. And what we should be able to do is have this leading all the way to the center. And uh, eventually all of our other lines should work. Um, now, the way that this is set up is you use your hammer and you can hold down shift and you can actually tilt these belts and so you'll end up getting something that looks like this and then this will lead all the way down and the same on this side all we've got to do is get this lined up not rotator machine here there we go and then we'll get the belts set up like so and i'm going to do something interesting here um i think one of the best storages honestly is the backpacks mod it sounds a little bit uh odd but it is. The backpack, when placed down, is a storage. And it has upgrade slots. And this one backpack, only on diamond tier, can hold a ton of items when it's upgraded. So I think essentially what I want is everything to lead to this. And then I'll just use a storage interface on this. And we will just use that as a massive storage. And later on, we can even set up filters to tell this, hey, um avoid anything that that goes over what's inside now one thing i want to do with this storage bus is i want to set the priority uh, high um but i also want to make sure that the uh the actual insert and extract is going to be like specific we want to make sure this is extract only so we're not putting items back into this backpack um and so now we should be able to start adding our seeds such as our air earth water and fire let's go ahead and get those put in and we can place them in over here so i'm just going to put the, the dirt in the air seeds and so on and so forth like repeating this task here so it's going to be a lot of seed placing but once we get it in it should be passive resources so i now have one side done but i want a whole basic section 18 of these machines to be focused on specifically making coal seeds for now and this is really going to bump up the production 
of our coal uh, overall. And so let me go ahead and put this all in my inventory. I got this all situated so that way I can go ahead and, and produce this stuff quickly. Um, so all I got to do is place in this seed and then I can just with an empty hand, I can go ahead and refill this over and over again. So that makes it a little bit easier for me just to simply stand here and make all 18 of these. And then I get to show you this setup that I, I was working on. So just take a look at this bad boy. That's right. I have all of these set up. Well, I don't have the middle ones powered just yet, but I will get them powered up. And uh, for right now, I need to pop in here and each one of these is going to be coal. This is all going to support some coal here. That is going to be super powerful, making sure that we have an infinite supply of some sort of fuel resource uh, that we can use, for example, in our pneumatic craft setup and uh, any sort of future endeavors. It's going to be amazing. So now that I've gotten all of this resources set up and we can now start to sort of funnel that towards other things such as storage for the whole setup. Um, so I definitely want to upgrade this backpack to be able to support multiple things. So I just crafted a tier one stack upgrade. We're also going to craft a tier two stack upgrade. And then since diamonds are basically free, which is kind of nice, we can go ahead and make a tier three. Now, my plan is to have multiple tier three upgrades inside of this bag, but at least getting started with one is going to be nice. It'll be able to hold 512 items per backpack slot here. So right now it's already halfway full, but if I put this in and then I sort the backpack, notice that everything gets nice and compressed. And that's exactly what I want to see. This right here, it holds 512 items per slot. And as soon as we get even more upgrades in here, it's going to hold so many items. And we're not really going to need to worry too much about babysitting this. Now, I think the end goal with this is to just have all of these things just auto crafted for us, utilizing like an RF tools crafter, for example. I think that will be a good way to go about handling multiple crafts out of this thing. That'll definitely be something that I manage down the road. Now, I do know that once all of these machines are running, I'm probably going to need two more combustion uh, chambers that are at least running off of oil. But hopefully soon we can maybe switch from oil and uh, start wor working our way through the, the power tiers and maybe start refining some of the oil that we have uh, and maybe start even generating oil because it should be something we can do very soon. Now, while all of that is starting to prep up, let's dive deeper into the applied energistics section and let's make ourselves a matter condenser. And this is actually gonna be a really useful thing for us because it's going to lead us into a quantum bridge card, which will allow us to have wireless access to our terminal cross-dimensionally. Now, once we make a matter condenser, we're actually gifted with something very nice, a 64K ME storage component. And we also get an infinite water source, uh, but we're not given a way to necessarily get the water from one place to another. And that's where I'm going to dive a little bit into another mod. Um, so this over here, if we can go ahead and set this up, basically we have this and then we're going to put ourselves a component in here, a 64 K storage component. And we need to switch this over to producing singularities because it's wanting a singularity to be produced. Um, and so once we have this done, well, we can start sending it fluid. Yeah, uh, to trash. So now what exactly do I want to use to send items from one place to another? Well, that's going to be laser IO. Yes, we have laser IO in here. And now that we have auto crafting, I find that this is one of those mods that it's, it's really nice once you have auto crafting because hand crafting, it can be kind of tedious. So now that we have the ability to auto craft, we definitely should. So. I have a crafting pattern over here that is making basically the basic components um, that are doing the crafting. And then we have all of this, right? And then we need these chip circuits. So now that we've crafted them, we need to smelt them. And because we have access to all of that, oh, how it makes everything so much nicer. So we can just send that over here and, uh, you know, access our patterns, which we're going to need to extend my pattern section over here. This actually just filled up our molecular assembler crafter. Uh, but we should now be able to craft a laser IO node. Uh, but we're missing a little bit of clay. Thankfully, though, we can auto craft clay. So that is something that we can now do because of all the stuff we just set up. We can now do essence crafting in order to craft certain items. Now, I'm pretty sure this should work. So all we're going to need to do is take our laser IO node and we're going to place it back here. 
And then I'm gonna place my sink back here. And then we just need to select this side, which is going to be this north side. And I do have a card holder, that's why you see this section right here, which allows me to stack cards, um, which is gonna be pretty useful. So this has one on the north side. So let's put one on the south side. There we go. And then on the on the side that's connected to the sink, we wanna extract from that. So I'm gonna right click on here and set that to extract. And then we'll put some overclocker upgrades. This allows me to increase the amount in here. If you hold down control and shift, you can actually increase this very quickly. And then also this is uh, by left clicking and then you can right click to decrease. And so now I have this set to transfer eight buckets every single tick. Um, so that's a lot of fluids going in. And so this should start to raise up over time. And we need to fill this with 256 worth of fluids. And this is probably gonna be one of the fastest ways, at least this early on, to do this. Now, since I'm working towards getting wireless access to the applied energistic system, I'm gonna also need a MA security terminal. And fun fact, in 120 version, this is actually no longer a thing, if I remember correctly, uh, which is kind of interesting. But uh, in the 119 version, which we're currently in, the ME security terminal is still in the pack, which is uh, how we're going to be able to link basically our wireless terminals into our system. I should now have everything in order to craft the wireless terminal. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that crafted up. And I was wondering why we were given a dense energy cell early on. Turns out, now I know, it's it's used to make this uh, because we do have infinite power in that regard. Um, so now that we have this, it does complete our wireless crafting terminal and we're given a an empty wireless universal terminal. Now, I will preface this. Um, in my experience, I actually prefer having these individual wireless terminals. And the reason why I like having the individuals is because I can have them in my curio slots and I can specifically set hotkeys to every single individual one instead of going to this one, which I'm not sure if it 100% supports that from my memory. I'm pretty sure that was an issue that I had with Volcano Block. And so with this, I should now be able to link it up. So let's go ahead and send it into a security terminal. That's where I ended up putting this. So now it says linked. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my inventory for now. Um, and then we just need to charge it. So I'm gonna get it charged up and uh, we should now have access to our grid. And the cool thing is, is we should be able to set a hotkey to be able to open this. So now in the key binds, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that whatever you set this to doesn't have a conflict, but it is actually going to be open wireless terminal and I have mine set to control E, but it did have a keybind conflict with the Techno Bobbles mod. So I just removed that. And now I can access my terminal by hitting control and E. And this is something that I really enjoy. Uh, I like having a terminal for each thing because I can also have a terminal for my encoding and I can have a terminal for my accessing of all of my patterns uh, to be able to place them. So in that regard, anywhere I'm at, I can basically access this pattern terminal, craft the pattern, and then I can immediately put it in to get to work. So this is something that I really enjoy and why I like keeping these sort of separate. And uh, they do get stored inside of terminal slots. And just like this, we should now have our first singularity. That's right. Now we have the ability to kind of make this, well, where we can access this dimension always. Um, from anywhere, which is going to be pretty powerful. So we have ourselves in interpearl and it tells us these singularities can be compressed with an explosion and interpearls to create a stable entanglement between them. So what we need to do is we need to explode this. Um, it seems like a lot, um, but let's go ahead and take this with our tiny TNT, which doesn't do too much damage, thankfully, and a redstone torch. Okay, so I think just to be safe, Let's go ahead and do it right here by all of our precious equipment, just to make sure that we cause the most damage if anything goes wrong. We'll place this down, make sure my magnet is turned off. And I'm gonna to toss this down and this down, and then let's set this off. <laughs> and this is going to entangle. There we go. And that split this into two little tiny pieces. Very nice, right? So now we have this entangled singularity. And over here is something very interesting. We have the connected nexus over here. And uh, what we can do is actually link this to one of these quantum link chambers by simply putting this singularity part in here 
and making sure that this singularity is, is going to be used in the quantum bridge slot. Let's make that. First, we need to craft our quantum bridge card. And now that we have access to that, we should be able to open this up and put our quantum bridge card in. And then this little slot right here will give us access to this. So there's only one way to test that. And that is by going to the nether. And can we open this up and access our storage? Yes, we can. Look at that. So now we have wireless access cross-dimensionally to our base. Now, something else I noticed, I don't know if this is a part of the quantum bridge itself that does this, but it's also not losing power. So I'm assuming that it is powering from our current uh, network through that bridge. So uh, yes, it's not losing any power. When I pull any items out, it stays the same. So that is another thing that I don't have to worry about. So I must say, today has been quite productive and I now have the ability to expand upon all of our resource generation. Oh boy, I am excited for this. Everything is set up and ready to go. All we're going to need to do is simply farm more essence and then we'll have items for days. It's gonna be so nice. But guys, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up. Guys, I thank you so very much. If you're a supporter of any tier, be sure to get your world download and hop into this world and enjoy it for yourself. Explore around, find all kinds of new things. And uh, guys, well, speaking of uh, support and the, uh, the world downloads, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks is going to go out to Keevan. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way. Over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible and absolutely going above and beyond. I'll see you guys over on the server and over on Discord. Be sure to join it, discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.